Greetings all in Jesus' name. It's been a little while since I've been on video here. We just spent two weeks traveling out west. Many of you will know we were in uh, Tabor, Alberta, preaching in Vauxhall. And it was just a, such a blessing, such a joy, and, and a good time for us. We were very refreshed by the saints out west. Not only by those we preached to and ministered to, but those who ministered to us through provisions. Many people uh, gave money, gave time, gave food, gave hospitality. And we were, treated, uh, we were treated very, very well. We felt humbled and blessed by that. And then we also got to spend some time up uh, by Edmonton area, seeing my brothers for just a very, very short period of time. Saw the mountains and the glories of the, of the Rocky Mountains there, and it was a real blessing. So anyway, we're back now. One of the things that I shared with the men out in Alberta that I kind of wanted to repeat on, a, on this form here was the idea of submission. Uh, you wouldn't think that I would have preached to men about submission, but I just kind of had this fresh revelation, a new thought about submission that I received from a preacher named Douglas Wilson. He has a lot of good to say about marriage, and uh, he had some really good thoughts that I used and kind of reincorporated and, and taught these men about what submission actually is. So there's a passage in 1 Corinthians 11, very famous passage. It says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. We're not going to be talking about head coverings here right now, but that's the, the verse that we're using. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So here's the idea. The Bible says that man, the masculine man, is the image and glory of God. But then the next part reiterates that glory part, but it does not reiterate the image part. So man is the image and glory of God. It does not say that the woman is the image and glory of the man. It just says that the woman is the glory of the man. So here's the idea is that man and woman together, the Bible says in, in the beginning, when God made male and female, he created Adam. Adam was male and female. Yes, Adam was man, the man, Eve was the woman, but together they made up the image of God. For in the image of God created he them, it says. Male and female created he them, him. So Adam, as a, a race of people, is male and female. And it, it is not until a male and a female perfectly complement each other and fit together that the image of God is truly seen and represented on earth. So man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So men sometimes think that if women are supposed to submit, then that means they need to take charge, or that they need to be the head in a sense that they think that they need to cause the wife to submit. This is the most ridiculous view of submission that there could be. The Bible, you know, if if you and I get into a ring together, and this was the illustration that Doug Wilson gave that I shared with the men out there, you and I get into a ring together and we get into a wrestling match, the winner submits the loser. They even talk about submission holds. You know, you put somebody in a choke hold and then if they tap out, that's considered a submission. Or if one man knocks the other man unconscious, he submitted the other man's powers. When the Bible says that the, that the man is the head of the wife in 1 Corinthians 11 or in Ephesians 5 or in Colossians, it says it in multiple places, the man is the head of the wife, the husband is the head of the wife, it's not saying that the husband should dominate the wife, that the husband should put the wife into submission. Absolutely never does it say this anywhere. It is only when you understand that your wife is your glory, that you can actually appreciate what he's telling you here. So the idea is not of a, of a match between two people. It is much more a dance. Think of a waltz. Sometimes you see this in old movies when people still waltzed and danced like that. The man would lead the dance and the wife would follow, follow the lead of the man who was guiding her well. So when you think of the wife submitting unto the husband, it's not the man dominating the wife and causing her to submit. It's the man leading the wife, showing her the way, guiding her into a proper view and establishing her steps so that she can be seen as glorious. You know, ultimately at the end of a dance, most people's eyes are riveted 
upon the woman in her glory, in her beauty, the, her majesty, the way that she flows and spins and the way that she dips down her hair in her beautiful gown and whatever else that might entail. But the woman is the one who gets seen. She is the one who gets lifted up. You know, in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says that husbands ought to love their wives even as Christ loved the church. And then he says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Why? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. There's that word glory. A glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So here's the idea, guys. When you think of leading your wife, you are leading her so that she can be your glory. You know, if the man and the wife were dancing like that in a waltz, and at the end of the dance, the man dips the wife down and whispers into her ear, I beat you, he would have defeated the whole purpose of the dance, would he not? The whole, whole idea of the dance is to, is to bring out the gloriousness of the bride, to bring out her beauty, to bring out who she was made to be. So when, when the Bible says, husbands, you are the head of the wife, he's not giving you a privilege. He's not giving you something that you can say, yes, that's right, to. What he is telling you is, you have an incredible responsibility. Your wife needs to submit to you. That's her command, but I'm speaking to men. When you think of your wife submitting to you, it should humble you. It, it, there should never be the thought of, <coughs> I'm the man. I'm in charge. I will bring you down to your position. You're always thinking about how to bring her up into glory. Because ultimately, she represents you. If your wife is discouraged, if she is uh, despairing or depressed or anxious or whatever, it reflects you. And if your wife is uh, free, if she is rejoicing, if she is happy, this also reflects you. She took on your name. She gave up who she was to submit to you and to become your wife, to lead your children, to guide your household. This is a, a message or a position of deep humility. We should be like Christ, guiding our bride by loving her, by washing her, by cleansing her, by listening to her, by hearing her, her issues in life, by taking them into us and, and de bearing her burdens. You know, the Bible says that we ought to bear one another's burdens. There's nobody's burdens more rightful for you to bear than your own wife. And there's this idea of cleansing her, of washing her. Not that you're superior and don't need cleansing, but you're stronger. You're bigger. The Bible says we should give honor unto our wives as unto the weaker vessel. Not weaker in that you can dominate her. Weaker in that you can lift her up. You can guide her in through the dance so that she looks glorious and beautiful. That's what Christ is doing to us, his bride. On the day of Christ Jesus, we will be seen as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And that is your job also as a husband. I think we should embarrass those people who say that, like there's a very popular doctrine right now among Christians, it's called egalitarianism, that men and women are completely equal in every possible way. Now, we would call ourselves complementarianisms. That means we also believe that we are 100% equal in God's standing, but that God gave us different roles. In the same way that God is the head of Christ, and Christ is no less than God, and so the wife or the husband is the head of the wife, but that does not make her less than the husband. Just like Christ coming down to the earth to give himself for us and to, you know, to do all the work that he did on the cross, that did not make him less than the Father, but he did submit himself to the authority of the Father. So they're perfectly one. It's, it's not even robbery if Jesus were to call himself God because he is God, yet he made himself of no reputation and he became obedient even to the point of death and so the same way when it says that the man is the head of the wife the wife should submit to the man it is in no way shape or form giving the man a higher position it is a complementary position 
It is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit working in perfect unity. It is the, the husband and the wife working together in perfect unity, producing fruit, bringing about godliness in this world. It is never a, a matter of winning. It is not a matter of dominating or one deciding, I will lose, I will lose, I will lose. No, it is, I'm going to allow this man to lead me and to guide me and I'm going to follow his lead well. Even if he goes off astray, the wife submits to his lead. And the man has this incredible weight upon his shoulders that says, you are the man. You need to lead this woman. You need to lead her into glory. You need to see your wife not as just a partner and not just as a helper, not just as someone who is there to serve you because she does all those things, but rather as your glory, as one who who radiates who you are. And it is your job to cleanse her with your word, with the Bible, with the scriptures, but mostly the way that you speak to her, the way that you lead her, the way that you cleanse her. Your business is to die for your wife. Your business is to uh, lead her as Christ leads the church. She is your glory. She makes you shine. And you should embarrass those egalitarians who think that us complementarians don't really love our wives, that we want our wives to submit. We want our wives to be less than us. We should be so lifting up our wives and so loving them that those of us, those that disagree with us would look at us and say, but I thought you guys thought women were second class. I thought you guys thought that women were unimportant. No, 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 no. absolutely not. We just believe that men and women have different roles. We believe that men are stronger for a reason. We believe that men are masculine for a reason. We believe that women are feminine for a reason because a man can't be feminine the way that a woman can. A man cannot fulfill the role of a woman, nor can a, a woman fulfill the role of a man. So we as men should take the weight. We should take the, um, the initiative. We should take the lead. We should be kind to her. We should share our hearts with her. You know, a lot of you men don't ever talk to your wives. I know this because I know a lot of men. Men seem to struggle with this. But you need to make sure that your wife is not lonely, obviously. Make sure that your wife is not depressed. Make sure that your wife is not unhealthy. It is your, not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Some of it might be your fault. But you need to take extreme ownership, as Jocko Willink would say. You need to take ownership of everything under your roof. All that falls under the household of Blatz in my family, in one way, shape, or form, comes back to me. Not because it's a drag, but because it's a glory to me. It's a blessing to me. The weight is upon me, but it's because God has given me a responsibility, and it is up to me to lift it up. My children, obviously, but my wife, first and foremost. She is my glory. She, as your wife grows in her position of helper, she is growing up into glory, not down into oppression. Very, very important. Your wife should not be feeling oppressed by you. She should be feeling lifted up by you. This is the duty of a husband. Both of us, for husbands and wives, the way up is actually down. The way for me to, to be at the top is to serve my wife as Christ loved the church. It's to give myself in sacrifice for her. The way for a wife to find her proper glory, her proper position, is to submit herself to her husband. It gives her glory. It makes her radiate. And all of humanity, all of our ideologies in this world might scream otherwise. Don't ever submit to a man. He's not a good leader. He's not a good man. It is by serving him and submitting to him that you sometimes can cause him to rise to the occasion. And men, if you've ever gotten the idea that submitting is a matter of your doing, you've misunderstood. It is up to your wife to submit. It is up to you to lead her and to bring her up into glory. God bless you.